Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So imagine you run an auto dealership and you get a really, really good deal on a new vehicle, okay? Only to discover that it has an issue with the BCM, all right? Now you identified the problem, but the solution is a little bit complex because you don't know if your tool's able to even do it. Uh, you gotta get pin codes, you gotta get, you don't know if it needs programming. You know, these are technical challenges that a lot of common uh, auto dealerships have within their mechanics because this uh, type of uh, way of um, solving the problem exceeds the mechanical's know-how, you know, the mechanic's know-how. So what I wanna do is share with you guys the step-by-step -step procedure I did with my client, um, not only to help them fix their problem, but eventually sell the vehicle, okay? So with that, let's jump into it, you guys. We are going to be learning how to replace and program a BCM on a 2017 Ram ProMaster, okay, with the IM608. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent all-tail diagnostic consultant. I align people with the right diagnostic tool strategy and give them the one-on-one -on -one training that you see in this presentation. So if you would like to get on the right track, head on over to alltailtech.co.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation. Now this is what you're going to be learning today. You're going to see which tools were used to conduct this procedure, the integral role of the BCM, location and removal instructions of the BCM, how to retrieve the security pin code, and how to successfully replace and program a new BCM. Now the tools that we use in this case study are the IM608 Pro, your Windows laptop, and a body control module. And to give you guys a bit of background, the technician works for an auto dealership and that just acquired this 2017 ProMaster. The original BCM was faulty, so they replaced it with a new one. Now, his intent was delivering a solution and the technician had a challenge on how to approach the situation with his IM608 Pro. So that's when he sought my expertise to guide him with the right approach with the IM608 and the Y-Tech software, okay? So, before we jump in, let's just understand the role of BCM on this vehicle, okay? So, the BCM is kind of like the central command center, all right, for electronic function, managing everything from climate control to window operations and security systems, okay? And it's also like what I call like a network chief, as it's the communication hub that uses the CAN bus system that talks to other modules, ensuring that every electrical component from headlights to alarms is working in harmony, okay? So here I put all the uh, fuses and stuff so you guys can take a picture of this, okay? Now, the location is uh, usually positioned within the cabin on the driver's side of the vehicle, okay? And it's tucked away um, within the instrument panel adjacent to the steering column. All right. Now, the first step is to read the manufacturer's information. It's critical, you guys. Okay. So it tells us during the body control module replacement procedure, the original VIN and electronic key code will be needed. So this is due to the fact that it's going to need some sort of synchronization um, and the key code helps synchronize the BCM with the vehicle's existing security network, ensuring you know, seamless operation, operation and maintaining the integrity of the vehicle's anti-theft system. Okay, And it goes on to tell us when replacing any module, refer to the replacement and programming order. All right, so it's like a guide and this is critical because Depending on what modules you replace at the same time, there's a different programming order, okay? You can see here if you have a new BCM, new ignition uh, key fobs, and PCM, you have to follow these uh, programming orders. In our case, we're gonna be doing number four due to the fact that the only thing that's new is the BCM. The keys are staying the same, the PCM is still the same, and all we need to do is connect the BCM and have the ignition on, and then we're gonna run the BCM replace uh, miscellaneous function, okay? 
Now to remove the BCM, the first thing we want to do is disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. And then we're going to uh, remove the lower dashboard panel on the driver's side to access the BCM and then unplug all the electrical connectors um, with care to prevent damage. Okay, you can see if you compare the pictures, you can kind of see which ones those connectors are. And then um, unfasten the, the mounting screws or bolts, securing the BCM, and then you're going to go ahead and slide it on out. All right. Now, step one is what I call the remote diagnostic evaluation. What I like to do is just do a scan on the vehicle. Um, just because if I jump straight to the procedure, if it doesn't work, I'll keep on doing the procedure and then if, if it fails, I have to go back and do this anyways to find out the root of the problem. So this will just give me an idea of uh, what's going on. I want to see if there's any like no communication issues and so forth. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go to auto scan and uh, it's going to zip straight through these modules. And you can see the BCM has a lot of faults in it, okay, which is ex expected. And uh, from here, now that I have an idea of what's going on, let's go ahead and do the uh, procedure, okay? Um, now, I'm going to follow the OEM instructions, and there's different ways you could probably do this, but I'm just going to give you my reasoning on doing it the way that I did it, okay? So once we identify the vehicle, we went into the Immobilizer app and uh, let's see, I went to System Selection. If you have a Learn key, turn the ignition on, okay. And we're gonna have a menu here. Fast forward it for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna do this procedure first just because that's kind of, um, what the manufacturer's guide told me to do and um, in this process it's actually going to retrieve the pin code okay so we're going to select the body control replace option because this is likely the where it initiates a routine to configure a new bcm okay so we go ahead and click that and we have a series of prompts okay if you want to change the vin directly please go to email replacement Da, 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 da. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, this function requires reading data from the old module first. Do not remove the old module. So the original module is still intact on the vehicle and it's going to attempt to inhale the data so maybe we can put it on the donor module when we prompt it. Okay, please connect the old module. All right, and we're going to go ahead and click OK. We'll let it do its thing. Switch the ignition off and on again. All right, we're going to go ahead and do that and click OK. And once we do that, we'll see the prompt. OK, so when this came up, you can see there's a lot of data. My client asked me, what does all this stuff mean? OK, so the chip refers to a microchip used within the vehicle's key fob or immobilizer system. OK. The key type indicates the classification of the key used by the vehicle's uh, security system. This is here as 46. And this kind of helps identify the correct key profile uh, needed when programming. All right, the password is what we were looking for, which is the unique code 61752. And typically aftermarket scan tools will generate a five digit pin code, okay? Um, I guess just, that's, that's just how the algorithm works with aftermarket scan tools. Um, the number of keys is what keys, how many keys are registered and programmed in the system. And the key ID 1 and 2, uh, these are like identification numbers, okay? So each key has a unique uh, ID that the vehicle system recognizes, which is used for tracking and programming purposes, okay? so. We took a picture of this, we have the pin code, and we're gonna see how far this uh, you know, menu could take us. If we could do it on the vehicle, great. From my experience, a lot of these newer vehicles aren't really successful in terms of using our software 
uh, when doing module replacements, okay? Um, so please wait. Ah, failed to read data, okay? So it wasn't able to get all the data that we needed. We clicked okay, but it did give us an option to read the data um, on the bench, okay? Now at that time, I didn't wanna take this route because I didn't know the level of how comfortable my client would want to do this on the bench. For most people, it might be simple, but uh, he did tell me that he had Y Tech partially installed, and I said, "Okay, well, let me just use that software to, you know, finish the procedure." And that's what we did, executing the BCM replacement with the Y Tech software. Okay, so as you see here, there's the topology of all the modules we're gonna to go to miscellaneous functions okay and we're gonna locate the BCM replacement routine okay which you can see it right here okay and then once we select that this procedure should be run after a new BCM has been installed it will program the BCM with data downloaded from the dealer connect server okay and then um, it's going to verify if this is the correct VIN, which it is. And once it writes the VIN, it's going to be permanently on there. So we're going to click yes and then click continue. And then now we're going to take that code that we generated uh, with the IM608 and we're going to put it into the uh, uh, prompt right here. All right, 61752, we're going to click OK. Now it's downloading the information and we'll let it do its thing. All right, make sure your battery maintainers uh, at a good voltage. We got no other distractions going on. All right, so the BCM has been programmed. Once this procedure is closed, the application will start. Please cycle the ignition and reconnect to the vehicle. All right, so you're going to go ahead and follow the instructions and um, my next step is to clear any faults um, and see what faults are existing okay um, if you can remember we had a lot of faults on the system and uh, ho i'm hoping that once we get it cleared uh, we'll be able to eliminate all this stuff like the programming would be the solution for all these fault codes all right so everything clear pretty much we have one code a u1710 and um, the client told me everything was looking good on the dash the car started perfectly however there was another challenge all right and this is the radio anti-theft code okay so when you replace a bcm and the radio subsequently asks for a pin it's typically due to the radio's anti-theft system being triggered, all right? Now the radio is designed to lock and require a code if it loses power or if it detects it's being removed from the vehicle. And this can happen when disconnecting the battery or, you know, replacing the BCM, all right? So the question is, can we just use the PIN code we got from the IM608 uh, from, you know, the BCM? And the answer is no, because the anti-theft radio code is a separate security feature um, for the radio unit, and it's usually a four-digit code, all right? So the dealership systems um, often use a database and tools that align directly with the vehicle's manufacturer's systems, and they'll be able to provide us with the code. There are some third-party applications that can also give you radio codes, but I haven't validated that. And this is just a strategy that I recommend to my client. So how to get the radio code. First thing, we're going to call the dealer. Okay. Some are nice, some are not, but you know, maybe they'll give you this information. Give them your VIN number, and then you're going to give them the uh, serial number of the radio on the chassis. Now, typically the number, the serial number will begin with the letter T and it'll be like, you know, 14 characters with a mix of numbers and um, letters. 
Um, for models like 2013 and newer, the serial numbers will generally start with an A to C. All right. Now, let's see the client's results. After following my instructions, um, he wrote to me, just to let you know, we called the dealer. They required the VIN number and radio serial number to provide the pin, and now it's unlocked and working. Thanks. Okay. So, in summary, always consult the service manual first to determine the specific programming sequence required for your vehicle. Second, use the IM608 to retrieve the security pin code and then use the YTEX software to perform the BCM replacement procedure. And lastly, if the radio anti-theft is activated, give the dealer the VIN radio serial number to get the four digit code, okay? So with that guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you work on a lot of Chryslers, if you're tired of outsourcing them and would like me to help you step-by-step -step install this software, uh, go to my website, book the uh, J2534 training consultation service. It's a $200 training and I will log in, walk you through this step and give you the right framework and approach to do this yourself. Okay. So with that guys, enjoy, have a wonderful week and I will talk to you in the next one. Take care.